This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, everyone. So this week is uh, the Haftarah of Shabbos Chazayin. It's the third week of the thir- three Puraniyos. Have a sit down. It's the third week of the three Haftarahs of Puraniyos. We know the first one is um, d- um, Divrei Yirmiyahu ben Chilkiyahu. That was uh, the Haftarah of Parshas Pinchas. And the Matas Masay is Shimud Dvar Hashem from the Novi Yirmiya. And then finally, the most... Uh, the most mournful of the three Haftaris is Chazoin Yishaya ben Amoitz Asher Chaza al Yudav Vishalayim. Now uh, let's let's start by examining the pasuk Yotes and pasuk Chaf. The pasuk says Im Toivu Ushematem. If you want and you listen, Tov Haaretz Toichelu. The good of the land you'll eat. The Im Tamanu. But if you refuse, Umarisem and you rebel, Cherev Teukalu. You will be consumed by the sword. Kipi Hashem Diber. For the word of Hashem has spoken. So it seems like we have two uh, choices here. What are the two choices? The two choices are Tuv Haaretz or Cherev. In life you always have two choices. You could choose the Cherev. What's the gematria of Cherev? Ari said, Rabbi, when you come back, want some good gematrias? Okay, so fine. So Cherev is 210. Cherev is 210. How about Tuv Haaretz? Tuv is always 17. And Haaretz, 17. 22, 23, 223 plus 90 is 313. Okay, thank you. So, Tuv is 313. And Cherev is 210. What is the difference between 313 and 210? 103. Okay, so in life, you always have two choices. You have the choice of Tuv Haaretz. Tuv Haaretz is 313. Or you have the choice of Cherev, which is 210. And the difference between the two is what? 103. Okay. So comes the Ben Ishchai in his parish on the, on the Haftoirah, look at number 6, and he says something very important. He says, Nira lirmoiz b'siyata d'shmaya. It would seem that there's a remez here with the help of the Almighty. Ha-hefrish sheyesh b'in misbar tov ha-aretz v'in misbar cherev. The difference in number between tov ha-aretz and cherev is 103. What's the significance of 103? Chesed kale. Chesed is what? 72. And Kale is 31, that's 103. Basically in life, you have two choices. You have the choice of the sword, or you have the choice of Tavaretz. The difference between the two is 103, which is Chesed Kale. Meaning, what saves a person from the Cherev, and allows a person to earn Tavaretz, is Chesed Kale, 103. So it's very interesting. We know that the power of Esav is what? The power of the sword. Look at number two. Esav was told, You'll live by the sword. You'll live by the sword. On the other hand, what saves us from the sword? What saves us from the sword? What saves us from the sword is the chesed kel. Look at number three. Matis halel bira Why do you praise yourself in evil, O mighty one? Chesed kel kalayim. The, the kindness of God is the whole day. The kindness of God saves us from the sword. The cherev is 210. What, what allows us to save ourselves from the cherev and earn what? Tova Aretz 313 is Chesed Kel. We always know that Esau's power is the sword. Like in Parshas Chukas, we just had, Vayoymer Elav Edoim, Loi Sa'av Orbi, do not pass by me. Pen ba cherev eitzei lekrasecha. Okay. What? Perhaps I will... Uh, I will come out with the sword. So you have two paths in life. You have the path of Tuv Haaretz, the good of the land, and you have the path of what? Cherev, which is Cherev is 210, uh, Tuv Haaretz is 313. The difference between them is 103. Marv Rabbi said, what else is 103? Egel. The Egel is 103. The Egel is what takes away the Tuv Haaretz, and now we have to suffer what? The Cherev. 210. So he says like this, Umat is halal baza, What protects us from the cherev, which is 210, is the chesed kel. Look in the final paragraph of the, of the Ben Eshchai. V'lachin be'egel, at the sin of the egel, kasher chatu bai, when we sinned, pagu v'sulku he'aras chesed kel. We infringed upon, and we removed the chesed kel. Chesed kel is 103. Egel is 103. Egel removed the Chesed Kel. So now we don't have the Chesed Kel. What do we have now? The Cherev. Oh, so the Pasuk says, 
Look in number five. Simu ish Take out your swords. Shevet Levi, take out your swords and kill Bnei Yisrael. Because now that they remove the Chesed Kale, which is 103, through the Chet Ho'ega, which is 103, now they're eligible to the Cherev. However, now we need to regain the Chesed Kale. How do we regain the Chesed Kale? So look in the Lashon of the Pasuk. The Pasuk says in number 5, Ivru vashuvu mishar lashar b'machana. Go and pass from gate to gate in the Machana. Machana is Gematria 103. By passing through the Machana, which is 103, it restores the 103 that was lost through the Egel and uh, made us eligible for the Cherev. And through the Machana, we're Zoich again to what? Chesed Kel. Okay, got it? So we have two paths in life. We have Cherev, which is 210. We have Tuva Aretz, which is 313. The difference between them is Chesed Kel. How did we lose the Chesed Kel? Through the Egel, which is 103. How did we get it, get it back? Ivru vashuvu mishal ashar b'machana. So what's Chesed Kel is 103. Why With is Tavar its path? Wouldn't it be like uh, being a, a tzaddik, being... No, the, right. These are the two things that you could choose in life. You could choose to have the sword, or you could choose, choose God's kindness. If you choose so the, the path of life... The kindness of God, the good of the land. You have one of two options in this world. You could keep the mitzvahs and have a good life, or you could cut corners and have a bad life. It's very simple. There's nothing in between. There's nothing in between. You have to choose. You choose the good path, you get um, the Tuv Aretz. You choose the bad path, you get the Cherev. What's the key? 103. Tuv Aretz, uh, which is Chesed Kel or Machana. So based on this Ben Ishchai, we could understand a very interesting conversation that took place between Rabbi Chanan Wasserman and the Belzer Rebbe. A rare conversation. There's a very um, mysterious medrash that says as follows, that the Malachi Asharis came and they built the first wall of the Beis HaMikdash with their Machana. Now, do you know the Gemara Psachim? What did Avram Avinu call the Beis HaMikdash? He called it what? A har. And Yitzchak came along and he called it a sada. And Yaakov came along and he called it a bias. That's the Gemara. But the Medrash says the Malachim came with their camp and they made the first wall of the Mikdash. Avram came, he made the second wall. Yitzchak came and he made the third wall. Yaakov came and he made the fourth wall. And Moshe Rabbeinu came and he made the roof. So what's the meaning over here? So if you look carefully in the Medrash, the Medrash says, the Malachi Asheris came with their Machana. What's Machana? What's the Gemachi of Machana? 103. 103. What did Avraham call the Mikdash? Har. What's the Gemachi of Har? 205. 205. Imakoilel? 206. 103 twice. He built the second wall. Chesed Kel. Yitzchak came, he called it what? Sadeh. What's Sadeh? 309. Chesed Kel times 3. 103 times 3. Yaakov came, he called it Bayis. What's Gematria Bayis? 412. 103 times 4. Moshe Rabbeinu built the roof. How? Voyez Chanan! 515! 103 times 5. Everything in this world is dependent on Chesed Kel. Chesed Kel is 103. Machana is 103. The Malachim came with their Machana. They built the first wall of the Mikdash. That's 103. Avraham called it Har. That's 206. He built the second wall. Yitzchak called it Sadeh. 309. He built the third wall. Yaakov called it Bayis. 412. He built the fourth wall. Moshe Rabbeinu said, Va is 515. He connected it all together. Chesed Kel times 5. How much is Har? 205. Imakoilel 206. 103 times 2. R is 205. If you take the word, you attack on one. That's a permitted procedure in numerical calculations. Why do we need to take a uh, word itself? You have uh, tradition uh, one trying off to fit is the it same into like the law. Like one. Why? No, the tradition of one off is like one, is because you could add the koila. Oh, is that the right? Yeah. Uh, could be. I, I just added it's based on this concept that 103 is not an arbitrary number. 103 is Chesed Kel. Ari said just one Gemach is not going to do it, so we have to do another one. Okay. So there's another Pasuk in uh, the Haftarah. The Pasuk says like this That's this week's Haftarah. 
Now we know David HaMelech says like this, Taroi Chlofanai Shulchan, Neged Tzairoi, Set before me the table opposite my enemies, Dishanta Vashem and Roshi, My head was saturated with oil, Koisi Rivaya, My cup overfloweth. Yeah? My cup overflows. Koisi Rivaya. So what does the Gemara in Yuma say about the cup of David HaMelech? That the Gematria of Rivaya, what's the Gematria of Rivaya? It's a Gemara. 221. That David Hamel's cup had 221 lugim. Yeah? David's cup had 221 lugim. That's a big, that's a huge cup. It's like the size of a, you know, I don't know, Guinness Book of World Records cup. It's like a swimming pool. David's cup had 221 lugim. So what does this have to do with anything? It says the Ben Ishchai, there's a remez here. David says, Dishant of Hashem and Roshi, Kaisi Ravaya. The Gemara says, The cup of David is going to have 221 lugin. Like it says, Kaisi Ravaya, Ravaya's Gematria, 221. Rav Moshe Zakuta writes, one of the Italian Mikubalim. So Rav Moshe Zakuta actually is buried right next to Rav, Rav Menachem Azaria of Pano. Tomorrow is the yard site of the Ramami Pano. Today is the yard site of Rav Shamshin Rashtapoli. Tomorrow is the yard site of Rav Menachem Azaria Mipano. And then Tuesday is the Ari. We have the triumvirate of Mikubalim back to back to back. You have the three great Mikubalim on Gimel Dalet and Hey Av. By the way, stay tuned. The Ben Ishchai wrote a Siddur of hundreds of pages of Tvilois to say on Tuesday the Yard Seid Ari. Luckily I have it. I bought a new set of Siddurim, like seven volumes of Siddurim for special days of the year. But I'm not saying you have to say the Siddur, but just be aware. Obviously it's an important day if the Ben Ishchai wrote a uh, Hundreds of pages of tefillahs for Tuesday. Okay, but anyway, you ready for this gematria? Ari is going to really like. It. He's going to go home. He's going to be very in a good, very good mood. Okay, even better. Okay, um, it says like this: two twenty-one. So Rav Moshe Zakuto says that La'asulavi they're going to be erech or oirech oirois two hundred twenty-one lights, and this is alluded to in the pasuk in number ten. Herkavta enosh l'roishenu banu ba'ish uvamayim v'atotzienu l'aravaya. We passed our heads passed through fire and water, and you took us out l'aravaya. L'aravaya is again two twenty one, which is the ha'arais of la'asulavay two hundred twenty one oirais. Okay, so this is an awesome gematria. You never saw this. This is a new procedure. You never heard this procedure before. This is not atbash. This is not the final letters. A new procedure of gematria. It goes like this. Look at the word bitzedaka. Look at the word bitzedaka. It goes like this: bitzedaka could be read bitzad kofei. The letters on the side of kofei. What letters are on the side of kofei? Reish vav. Bitzad kofei. Bitzdaka. Bitzad kofei. So take the letters on the side of kofei. The letters on the side of kofei. What comes after a kofi huda? It's not a funny question, no? What? You know what we mean on that. What comes after the letter Kuf? No, but after it. What comes after a Kuf Naphtali? Reish. What comes after a He? Vav. So the letters after Kuf and He are what? Reish Vav. 2, 16. You got it? What comes after a Kuf? Reish. 206. Vishaveha bitstaka. Vishav Yud Hey on the side of Reshvav. Take the fifteen. You put it on the side of Reshvav. And what do you get? Rivaya. Rivaya. Ah, so that's the Pshat. Tsiyan bi Mishbat Tipadat. Sion will be redeemed with Mishbat. When will that be? When Vishav Yud Hey, when the letters Yud Hey are positioned opposite Bitsad Kofe. What's on the side of Kofe? Side of Kofe is Reish Vav. On the side of, Re- of Kofe is Reish Vav. If you put Vishav Yod Hey on the side of Reish Vav, that will be, as the Gemara Numa says, the Kais of David Amelech, which is Kaisi Revaya. Okay, one last offering. Why did David have such a big cup? Why did he have such a big cup? That was a question? No, we're, that's a fact. That's a statement of fact. David had a very big cup, 221. What's the significance of that? It's a different share. We once actually spoke about that. Why, what's the significance of that number, 221? It's one less than uh, 222. 
there's a reason why that case is 221. But the point is, the Ben is saying that it's Marumas in the closing of the Haftarah, Tzion b'mishpat that when will that be? Vishaveha, when the Yud K will be positioned, B'tzad Kofhe, B'tzad Kofhe, yeah? Why is, it in, why is it said in this format, like in such a mysterious way, that you have to come up with a whole new frame of, of gematrias in order to tell us this lesson? I don't know. Okay. Okay, one last one. We all know, so listen to the passage. It says, Tzioim b'mishpat tipadeh v'shaveh b'tzdaka. That the redemption will come through charity. Says the Ben Ishchai, from here we see that the Iker Mitzvah, which is Masugal, to bring the Geula, is the Mitzvah of Tzedakah. That bottom line, when, uh, when we're up against the wall, at the end of days, the Mitzvah that's going to bring the Geula is the Mitzvah of Tzedakah. It's a Pasuk in the Navi. Tzioim b'mishpati pade, b'shaveha b'tzedakah. So his question is, that the Gemara says at the end of Makos, that if you would need to sum up all the Mitzvahs into one Mitzvah, what Mitzvah would you sum it up to be? What did the Navi Chavakuk say? The Navi Chavakuk says, what? Tzadik be'emunasai yichya. The Tzadik will live with emuna. So that sounds like, you know, the, the sum upshot of all the mitzvahs in the Torah is the mitzvah of emuna. So the Pasuk should have said, Tzioim be'mishpat tipada v'shaveha be'emuna. Why does it say v'shaveha b'tzdaka? So now he asks a very in- interesting question. We know there's only one mitzvah you're allowed to test Hashem. What's the mitzvah? Nicer. Maeser, tzedakah. Are you allowed to say, Hashem, I don't know if you're there or not. I'm going to see if you're around. I'm going to give 10% of my earnings to tzedakah. If I become wealthy, I know you're there. And if I don't become wealthy, then uh, forget the whole thing. Could you do that with tefillin? Could you say, I want to see if you're there. If I put on tefillin and my muscles grow big, then I know you're there. And if uh, I remain uh, well, uh, unfit, then uh, I don't believe. You can't test Hashem with tefillin, you can't test Hashem with Shabbos, you can't test Hashem with Torah, you can only test Hashem with tzedakah. Why? Why dafka tzedakah? Right? Like the Navi says in Malachi, uvchanuni na bezois. You can only test Hashem in what? In tzedakah, with this. So he quotes the Dubna Magid. So the Ben Ishchai quotes the Dubna Magid in the Oyal Yaakov. You ready? Take a look at number 12, right hand side on the bottom of the page. He says like this. You have basically a merchant, he comes to the city with a wagon full of items. Look at me, other people want to buy from him. This guy wants to buy 20 pieces of material. That guy wants to buy 30. And they ask him about the measurements. You know, they want to know, can we trust you, can we not trust, trust you? So he says like this, what do you want from me? Every single piece of material I have are exactly the same. They're all 60 amois. And the buyer said, I don't believe it. I think maybe some of the pieces are 57, 56. They've got to measure. So they basically want to measure and see if the guy is telling the truth or not. So if you want to test the quality of the material and whether the material is actually 60 amos long, which piece are you going to test? The piece that looks the longest or the piece that looks the shortest? If you want to see if the guy is telling the truth, you can take the piece, which looks like the shortest piece, the nebuchist piece, and you're going to test it to see if it's 60 amos. And if, you, if the piece that looks the shortest is 60 amos, then you could extrapolate, then uh, the guy is telling the truth. Probably everything else is also 60 amos. But if you want to test something, you're going to test the weakest link. Yeah? Fine. So it's like this. Achain, the guy says like this, I'm not going to take down every piece of material off my, off of my wagon, that's a big job, and uh, merchants don't do that. But this is what you do. You pick the weakest piece, you pick the shortest piece. Once he measures the shortest piece, he's not going to have a doubt about any of the other pieces. So too with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Yibbani Shalom comes to Klal Yisrael, and he comes with a big wagon. Of you know how many pieces of material? 613 pieces. And he says, by the way, these are 613 ways to get what? Tuv? Haaretz. Haaretz. Otherwise, you get what? The Haaretz. So these are 613 ways to get the good life. So Klal Yisrael says, uh, we're Basar Vadam. So we don't believe you. 
we're, we're gonna, I'm going to have a good life because I learned Torah. I'm going to have a good life because I daven. What does one thing have to do with the other? Rebbe Hashem, we don't believe you. So Rebbe Hashem says, what do you want me to do? Take down every single mitzvah and I'm going to have you test every single mitzvah to prove that I'm offering you a good life? You pick the mitzvah that you're most incredulous about and you test that one and if even the mitzvah that you don't believe will give you a good life gives you a good life, then you could extrapolate based on that that everything else will also give you a good life. So, Klal Yisrael, which mitzvah do you think by performing will take away from your enjoyment in life? Money! <laughs> Rebbe Hashem, if you're going to take away my money and I'm going to still have more money, from there I'm going to see that taka, the mitzvah, will give me a good life. Rebbe Hashem says, no problem. You give me a good chunk of your money, 10% if you can't afford it, 20% if you could afford it. You know, the Rambam says you have to give a choymesh. It's a big sugi you should look into. If somebody is an oisher, they should look into the sheet of the Rambam. The Rambam passes, you have to give 20%. If you can't afford it, you give 10%. If you can't afford it, you don't have to give 10%. It's not an absolute chiyuv, but In other words, meiser, there are three shitas of meiser. Some say it's a minog, some say it's drabanan, some say it's deraisa. Somebody doesn't and can't, can't uh, support their own family, they're not mechayiv to give meiser. Someone could support their family. They are mechayiv to give meiser. Someone could afford to give 20%. They may be mechayiv to give 20%. It all depends on a person's financial status, but lo- now is not the time. But that's the Indian. Hashem says, you want to test me? If you keep Shabbos, you'll have a good life. If that, you believe me, you'll have a good life. You have one day of rest. You have one day you could stay out of your car. Most stress in life comes from, from being in an automobile. You don't have to go into your automobile. You don't have to sit in traffic. Of course, that, you believe me, will give you a good life. But you don't believe me that by giving money away, you're going to have a better life. So the Rebbe Shalom says, pick the one mitzvah that you're incredulous about. You test me, and you'll see all the other mitzvahs will also give you a better life. So the Ben uh concludes, the Nimtzel Fizeh in the last paragraph, and we'll conclude with this. Shema Adam Yirtzel Akaima Mitzvahs, built the aid. If a person wants to fulfill the mitzvahs without any verification, without testing Hashem, he doesn't want to test Hashem in any way. You need faith. However, to give tzedakah, you need more emunah than any other mitzvah. Why? Because you're actually giving away your... your uh, Repertoire, you're giving away your resources for HaKadosh Baruch Shem Yer Tzalitein Tzedakah, built the Eid Havchana. If you want to give Tzedakah without any verification, Hinei Mokhra Shiyaloi, Amunah Gedoyla V'chazaka B'HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yan ki b'mitzvah kazu, Hinei L'fi Anira L'ayin, Husha Anois and Zagiyah Chasr V'nigra Al Yad Amei Erkai. Meaning, of all the mitzvahs in the Torah, which mitzvah should put a person, uh, ha- handicap a person? Tzedakah. I'm giving away my hard-earned money. So for tzedakah you need the most money, you need the most amuna. But what if you give tzedakah and you trust in God for every buck I give away, you're going to pay me back too? What if I give $10,000 this year because I know Rebbe Hashem is going to pay me back, I'm going to have $20,000 more in my bank account? That's the main emuna. When the Navi Chavakuk says, V'tzadik be'emunasa yichya. Interesting. When the Navi says that you could sum up the whole Torah down to one mitzvah, which mitzvah is it? Emuna. What he really meant was tzedakah. Because someone who gives tzedakah, he's demonstrating the highest level of emuna. He show, I believe, I believe you. That when I give away my hard-earned money, I'm not giving it away, I'm going to get it back. So even though God said one thing, you could sum up the whole Torah into one word, which is emuna. what He meant was the emuna needed to give tzedakah. Understand that it's the mitzvah of tzedakah. Now we understand what it means. That ultimately we will be redeemed through the mitzvah of tzedakah. But not the tzedakah of a guy who's a billionaire. So he gives away you know, some of his money and you know, he doesn't even feel it. The tzedakah of a person who works hard for his money. 
and he sweats for his money, and he still gives away the 10%, because he believes that Munash Lema, that he's not suffering, he's not giving it away, the Yibam Shalom will pay him back. That is the Zchus for the Gula, that's the Zchus of Emuna, that the Navi Chavakuk said, the Tzadik Emuna Sa Yichia, and with that we should be Zoycha, Tzioin B'Mishba Tipadeh, V'Shaveha B'Tztaka. So next Sunday is Tisha B'Av, and uh, the following Sunday I'm not going to be here, so we'll pick it up, Maybe uh, in two weeks from then. Okay, Rabbi Say Shkayach. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.